Have you ever wanted to get into machining in your home shop, but you don't know where to start, you have no idea what you're doing, and you don't have thousands of dollars to blow on the tools anyway? Me too! Nearly everything around us at some point has been touched by a lathe or a mill or something during its manufacture, or at least the tools to make it have been. Sure, you can whittle a wooden axle and wheels for your wagon or whatever, but if you want to drive that thing at like 70 miles an hour for the next 100,000 miles, you're, you're going to need a little more precision. Now machining doesn't just produce the like super tight tolerances that we need for like everything with moving parts, right? But machine parts, even even homemade, can be far more attractive, more professional looking, and they work better than just like rough crap that you hit with an angle grinder and just kind of guess. Just find some machining videos on YouTube and you'll see exactly what I mean. Beautifully professional, nice looking parts just coming off in this nice clean, clean swarf, which I'm sure is razor sharp and burning hot. And the, the products look amazing. Like the finished, the finished projects, they look great. And it sounds great, right? Except I can't do that here. Most of us uh, lack the tools required for this, right? And even if I did have the Nigerian prince who owes me all that money finally gave it to me, and I went out and I bought a full machine shop just full of all the equipment and all the metal stock on earth, uh, I'd be more likely to mill off my own ears than come up with a, a useful part. And I can't be the only one. But I have a solution. It'll take a while, but you can come along for the journey. Here it is. This is David Gingery's Build Your Own Metal Working Shop from Scrap uh, series. There are seven small books in this volume. You can buy them separately or you can get this giant tome version, uh, which works a lot better, to slam on your desk 15 seconds ago for a dramatic reveal. This will be a long series, so if you want to watch along, I hope you enjoy seeing me struggle. There's going to be plenty of that. And if you want to build along, you're going to need a copy of this book, either this or at least book number two, The Metal Lathe. I'll leave some links down below where you can buy these books. Uh, but if you know where to look, you can probably maybe find PDFs of it for free. But that wouldn't be the right thing to do. So I'm, I'm not even going to mention it. I'm going to start with book number two, The Metal Lathe. Then I'll do three, four, and six. Forget the rest. Uh, if you're wondering about book one, we'll speed run it right now for you. Uh, it's about a charcoal foundry. Don't build a charcoal foundry. End of book one. So my suggestion is you build or buy a propane furnace and burner setup. There are a bunch of videos out there how to build them. I have some myself. The ones I built are a little overkill. They can do iron. We're definitely not going to need that here. But I think pretty much all the, the, the commercial ones you can buy are fine. Even the cheapo ones will work for this. I know a lot of people have devil forges. Those work. That would be, that would be perfect. Also, don't, don't set up the mold and the gates and the runners and stuff like he suggests. I'll show you how I do every part and I'll kind of talk you through why I do it that certain way. Uh, so we'll, we'll cover it. You don't have to worry about it. And there are a lot of videos on YouTube about metal casting. Just know, most people don't know what they're doing. And that very much includes me, especially the early stuff. Do what all of them do if you want sand and bubbles trapped and everything and castings that look like crap. If you want like a good channel to watch for technique, I would say just watch Old Foundryman. He knows what he's doing. His castings look great. But I'll cover a lot of stuff as we go along. Now I'm not saying Gingery was like terrible or wrong or whatever, but he couldn't get Campbell's complete guide to casting that hadn't been published on the internet, which didn't exist yet, on the computer that he definitely didn't have at the time. This is a really old book series, that's what I'm saying. And I haven't gotten like confirmation on how to say his name. Gingery or Gingery? Personally, I'm a bit gingery myself, so that's what I'm going to say from now on. Sorry if it's wrong. So Gingery says to use aluminum, and I'm not. It's one of the many changes I'm going to make as we go along. I will be sure to detail and explain why I make these certain changes as we go. And as a general rule, substitute when he says pot metal, I'm probably going to use bronze. And when he says aluminum, I'm probably going to use ZA12. This is a zinc and aluminum alloy that's good for sand casting. And I think the only place that us home jobbers can get it is from Roto Metals. These guys. A bunch of you must have went and bought a whole lot of it after I did the video on this metal because they found me in their like order history and sent me this t-shirt, a hat, a bunch of metal ingots. Uh, so thank you for that, everybody. That was really cool. Hats aren't really my thing. Anyway, so definitely check out Rota Metals. Because of you guys and them, I now have enough of this metal to build the entire project. I didn't buy enough initially, even though this stuff is pretty cheap. This stuff, like it flows better than aluminum, it's stronger, it's heavier, it dampens vibration, the fumes are super poisonous, and it's very affordable. If you're wondering what the main issue with aluminum is, it's because Aluminum isn't one thing. Well, aluminum's like an element, it is one thing. But all of the aluminum around you 
is some kind of alloy, and if you just grab whatever scrap you got and mix it all together and throw in the cans and the extrusions and whatever else, you're probably gonna have a mishmash of different alloys and it's not gonna work very well. I've done that a lot and it caused me a lot of problems. If I'm good at anything, it's doing stuff the wrong way for a while before I learn. Learn from me, buy clean ingots of the right alloy and use that. Don't bother with the scrap. I plan to 3D model a lot of these parts, especially the ones I'm gonna change from the books. And as we go, I'll, I'll try to make those files available somewhere, maybe my mini factory, I don't know. But I will explain what changes I make and why. So if, if you're a Luddite out there and you still insist on making the thing out of wood, you can, you can do what I'm doing, you can follow along. I'm gonna change them mostly because I can't leave well enough alone, ever, just in general in life. Uh, but also I think I can make them beefier, and also I can make them less ugly. It's not a very attractive lathe is what I'm getting at. Especially like that metal frame that the motor bolts in with like the, the pull things and it's all just bolted together. I have a welder back there and I'm not afraid to barely know how to use it on camera. But that's a few steps down the road. So undoubtedly some of you are saying why build a gingery lathe when you can just buy a Chinesium one for 700 bucks or whatever. Well a couple of reasons random internet downer. First off when you're done building the gingery lathe in addition to the rush of feelings of satisfaction having built something, you now know how to use a gingery lathe. Because as you're building it, you use the half-finished lathe to build the rest of the lathe. It's kind of a building and education process. You have the lathe, you know how to use it, and you have the, the metal casting stuff, and you know how to use that. You can now cast your own parts and machine them by the time you're ready to do so. Pretty cool, right? Also, it's just a lot more fun to make stuff. Isn't that why we're here? And to those of you saying the gingery lathe is kind of crummy, well, yeah. Good lathes don't grow on trees. The crummy ones are kind of cheap, but I'd rather go through the adventure of having built a kind of crummy one than to go out and buy a crummy one, right? Who's with me? Anyone? Show of hands? No? No one's here. I'm all alone with my thoughts, it's terrible. The first major part of all of this is the bed. The bed is the largest casting, it's huge. And I've been having problems with ramming this thing up, which is why I'm holding the pattern and not the finished casting right now. As we go along, I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes. And if you've been around for a while, you know I will show every single mistake I make. And I'm gonna explain what happened, how I fixed it and so on. That'll help any of you following along, building it to hopefully avoid some of your own mistakes. And it will provide endless schadenfreude material for all of those just watching to see me suffer. So I aim to help everybody here. So I hope you want to follow along. This will be quite the lengthy adventure. If you have any suggestions or questions, how you want to see me build this thing differently, what you want it to look like, any suggestions at all, leave them in the comments below. If you're building along, let me know down in the comments. If you've already built one, let me know in the comments. And uh, everybody should just join the Discord server. There's a link somewhere in the description. Yes, the description is going to be kind of link spam. I'm sorry about that. Just look, you'll find it. It's in there. So until next time, probably monthly on these gingery lathe videos. Definitely not weekly. Next week will be something else. Peace out.